Well, hi, everyone, and welcome to Community Journal. We really appreciate you uh, joining us. And, uh, you know, the year marches on. <laughs> Has it ever? Oh, my goodness. Cranberry Harvest Weekend is this weekend with oh, the fair yeah, and I the music fest and yeah. the fireworks. Oh, my goodness. I yeah. can't believe it. Lots going on, that's for sure. Mm -hmm. We're going to start right at the beginning of the show with some announcements today. All right. And uh, we're going to start with Fall Frolic. And uh, this, is a, this is a great deal, really, with the Sound Dunes, a great sounding big band. Uh, enjoy live big band music, dancing, and refreshments with the Sound Dunes, Swing Ensemble. And we've heard them, and we know they are great. They are great. Yeah. We've said it many, many times. This keep is you on your feet. <laughs> keep you on your feet. They do. They really do. Friday, September 27th, from 6 to 8 p.m., and the event is free. That's Ooh. even better. Yes. <laughs> and uh, But an RSVP is required. Contact the Council on Aging at 508-430-7550. Or you can email emitchell at town.harwich.ma.us. Again, I suggest the phone number. <laughs> <laughs> and I'll repeat that. It's 508-430-7550. For the sound dunes. What do you have, Sounds Eileen? Sounds good. Oh, got lots, Jack. If you're interesting, is, <laughs> excuse me, if you're interested in beginning your family tree, longtime genealogist Janet Cassidy explains how to get started searching your roots using free resources. And that's going to be this coming Sunday, September 15th at 2 p.m. at the Brooks Academy Museum. And that, of course, is at 80 Parallel Street, Harwich. The admission is $5.00. And it doesn't say you have to let them know you're coming. So mm -hmm. if you're interested in beginning your family tree, Janet Cassidy will be available on Sunday, September 15th at 2 p.m. to help get you started at the Brooks Academy Museum. Yeah, and they've got plenty of room for seating there, so I'm sure. Yeah, yeah that yeah. might be why they're not uh, yeah, asking you to okay. RSVP. Very good. Our first spot this week uh, is going to be a Chamber of Commerce update with Cindy and Dinah. So let's take a look at that right now. Hello, I'm here with our monthly chamber update with Cindy Williams of the Chamber of Commerce. And uh, as usual, uh, she's gonna tell us all the wonderful things that are going on in Harwich this month, next month, and the months ahead. So looking forward to uh, hearing more about that. Well, good morning, Dinah. Good morning. Um, we're really excited to kick off fall with this uh, past weekend, Sunday, we had um, the hometown parade, which was uh, fun and the weather was great um, for yes, us. Yes, so just in time. Perfect day for a beautiful parade. Day. Nice slight wind. It was great. Great to see all the uh, participants. We had more participants this year than we have had since we brought the parade back. So that was nice. Great to take that corner out of Freeman and see all the people lining the mm. streets to uh, mm -hmm. watch what was uh, behind me and coming uh, ahead of them. Um, you can actually see the parade. Um, Channel 18 uh, filmed it for us, so it's on YouTube, so feel free. Uh, always a great thing to look back um, and see that. But I want to send out a great special thank you. It's kind of um, overdue to the police and fire and the DPW. Just uh, how amazing they were um, throughout the last few months always. But um, they came together for the parade, and DPW uh, helped us with uh, bringing out one of the trucks and... Uh, helping fill uh, a truck for Cole's uh, Socks for Smiles. So thank you to them. Um, sometimes I think they don't get thanked enough, so uh, thank you. And then this coming weekend, of course, is the Harwich Cranberry Festival, the 44th uh, annual. So that'll kick off on Saturday. Uh, that runs Saturday and Sunday and is behind the community center. Um, that got moved a couple years ago, and it really works out well with uh, the crafters, the nonprofits that are here, and then uh, the Crayon Jam, which is the music that they have um, both Saturday, and they have added some music again this year on mm -hmm. Sunday. And then- uh, That's great. And the, then the Harwich Artists are also doing the something in the Community Center that yes, day. Yes, which is nice. They do um, a on program Saturday. on Saturday, mm -hmm. and it's called Make It and Take It. So if you've never you know, kind of try to be an artist, you can that day. It's lots of different disciplines, apparently. Absolutely. Being you can led learn by everything, professional artists. Which is wonderful. Yeah. You know, I, so great. You know, I can maybe do a stick figure if I'm lucky, and then, you know, color inside the lines. Ah, well, maybe. in some of your free time that day, Cindy, <laughs> exactly. you should definitely try to come swing in and in. try it. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. 
And then, of course, Saturday night is um, the Chamber brought back, uh, this is our third year, um, bringing back the uh, fireworks. So we're excited to um, light up the skies, so to speak, with uh, the fireworks. And th a big thank you to our sponsors. You know, we can't do a lot of what we do without the wonderful sponsors that we have. So this year's presenting sponsors are RPM Carpets and Floor Covering in East Harwich and uh, Zooty. Then our platinum sponsors are Harwich Paint and Decorating, the Cranberry Festival, and JFF Architects. The gold sponsor is Terry's TV and Appliances. And then the silver sponsors are 400 East, Mad Minnow, Outer Cape Health, and Wingate at Harwich. So I want to thank all of mm. them because, again, without them, um, certainly um, it would be a challenge um, to put on something so amazing mm. and something that the community and everyone loves um, and remembers from their childhood. So we're excited for Saturday and uh, this weekend. So um, Lots of support. So yes, great. absolutely. Yep. And then October is right around the corner. I think you and I were just here and we were talking about the summer, but <laughs> now we're talking about the fall. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and there is. There's plenty to do this fall. You know, one of the things is I remember growing up, people always thought that the Cape stopped at Labor Day. You know, that has was, really changed. It really yeah. has. The seasons has, have extended. There are so many mm. wonderful businesses that are still open. You know, mm -hmm. there's not a little guy down at the Bourne Bridge of the Sagamore taking a key and locking them up. So please remember <laughs> that you can come to the Cape um, anytime. Um, we're here and we want you to enjoy um, everything that we have. But October, um, what we do on Columbus Day is um, the businesses get together and we do a sidewalk sale. Um, Traditionally, it's just been in Harwichport, but I'm going to reach out this year and see if any of the other of our seven villages would like to participate um, and uh, be a part of the sidewalk sale. So it's a great time. That's a good idea. To, yeah. uh, you know, add those special sales, getting ready for the holidays or whatever. So um, mm -hmm. that'll be Columbus Day weekend. That is on the Saturday of Columbus Day, rain date on the Sunday. So October 12th and then um, October 13th would be the rain date. Mm -hmm. And then we have Restaurant Week, which is October 13th to the 19th. So it gives everyone a chance to um, try your favorite Harwich restaurant. So uh, looking forward to getting all of what they're going to do for that. That's always a fun time. Oh, yeah. And then the Harwich Historical Society and Brooks Academy always have something happening, but it's really a lot of fun during um, October and the fall when they do the lantern tours. Oh. So those are uh, October 5th and 12th. So look forward to sharing more information about that uh, next month, hopefully. Mm -hmm. But then, do I dare? <laughs> <laughs> do I dare mention what's Moving right, right along around the corner into after that? The big holiday season. The right? big holiday season. You know, we have November twenty eighth. Of course, mm -hmm. is Small Business Saturday, um, which is always a lot of fun. Gets everybody in the mood to start um, shopping for the holidays, but also reminding everyone to shop small, shop local. Mm -hmm. And so uh, we'll be planning some fun things for that Saturday. And there's um, so well. much here. There, there is so much. much here. It's a great destination I, for shopping. I could never list them all because mm -hmm. there is yeah. so much. And as I mentioned, there's seven villages. Each one has mm -hmm. something. Mm -hmm. So um, really excited for that. Um, but Christmas, December 6th through the 8th is Christmas in Harwich. That's the first weekend. And uh, we've always traditionally had that first weekend in December. So last week, last year was a little funny because it was actually November 30th to like December 2nd so that that oh. messed everybody oh. up uh -huh. but it is December 6th through the 8th okay. um, Friday night starts our stroll in Harwichport with um, the tree lighting and uh, the elementary school singing so that'll be um, wonderful Saturday we'll have breakfast with Santa once again at the Pilgrim Masonic Lodge right here in Harwich Center and then Saturday and Sunday nights, again, we're going to be doing our trolley to Christmas Town with Santa reading the Polar Express. Mm -hmm. This year, we are back at um, the Brooks Free Library in the mezzanine, so I'm really excited for that. We've got some great decorations that um, were donated, so I can't wait to dress that up. And, and I love that the kids in pajamas. Oh, they're fat. It's I, so adorable. I love watching them come in because they'll come in first to the I chamber, know. and we have it decorated, so they yeah. all take pictures where Santa was Friday night. Mm -hmm. So they'll take pictures, and then I have a mailbox that we have them for their um, little activity after Santa has read to them to um, fill out a letter to Santa. They bring it back, put it in the mailbox, and we make sure that um, they get to Santa in time. Mm. So um, make, start to watch our Facebook um, because we will make the announcement that tickets are going on sale. They usually go on sale 
early second week in November, and they sell out. So certainly watch the Facebook because um, it will sell out for sure, and we okay. are excited about that. And that's tickets for the trolley to the Christmas trolley. town. Yep. Yes. Okay. So, great. Yep. So then that's that. Um, where does the trolley originate? It starts at the chamber, and okay. then it will then go and through it winds its up, way up to, to uh, Harbor Center. Harbor Center, okay. and uh, we'll stop at the library, mm -hmm. and then um, they go in. They have a great time with Santa. He reads the story, do their letter, and then hop on the trolley, come back, and <laughs> head home to. Uh, Say good night. <laughs> okay. But the last thing I want to remind everybody, as we all know, we've got a great project happening right now that just began the last week or so up in East Harwich um, with the wastewater uh, phase two. And there are a lot of businesses up there, restaurants, shops, and such. They are all open. So please watch the signs, see where the detours are. You can get to all of your businesses that you like to mm -hmm. um, go to, whether you know, you're buying new carpets um, at RPM, you need a refrigerator at Terry's, mm. a new outfit from Consigning Women. You know, there's everyone's up there. Um, Nothing still is open. shut down. Nothing is shut down. You may Excellent. just have to go a little different route, but you can get to everybody. So I um, mm -hmm. just wanted to make everyone aware of that as well. That's helpful. That's okay. great to know. So. Okay. That's Harwich in a nutshell this month. All right. <laughs> Excellent. Thanks so much, You're as so always. Thank you, Dinah. This is Dinah Lane for Channel 18. Thanks so much. Well, we appreciate uh, Cindy and Dinah sitting down, bringing us up to date as to what's going on this weekend. Big weekend, really. I know. Lots going on, and hopefully the weather will cooperate. Uh, yes, I hope so. Yes, and, especially uh, for the fireworks. But uh, now they have brought us up to date, <laughs> which is great. Mm -hmm. and. Uh, uh, really, it's a very nice take-in. We've done it many times. Oh, and, we do uh, it every year. We do it almost every <laughs> year. The fireworks are great. The food is great. You, you know, you get to meet your neighbors out there. And, uh, and uh, the vendors have so much to offer. I always start my Christmas shopping there. That's right. That's mm -hmm. right. Yes, you do. <laughs> yes, I do. <laughs> uh, okay, what do you have there, Eileen? Well, if you are interested in recharging your body, mind, and spirit, there are classes going on in meditation and mindful movement on Thursdays from 2.30 to 3.30 in the afternoon. And the investment is $10 per class or five classes for $45. And I'm not sure how many classes mm -hmm. have um, already happened, so you'd have to get in touch with uh, Janet Betty about that. She is the gal giving the uh, classes, and she is an E-RYT. And for more information, you can call her at 978 Five zero zero two three nine zero. The classes are sponsored by and held at the Harwich Council on Aging right here at the community center. And there is a long website, so I will repeat the phone number one more time. 978-500-2390. And Janet Betty is the gal you'll be looking for for that. Very good. Until well, I do another one. Why not? All right. <laughs> one of my favorite things to do. A tea party. <laughs> it's going to be held at Requasset Resort on Pleasant Bay, October 1st. We're getting into October dates. Mm. I can't believe it. There's going to be presentations by two guest authors. I think you're going to recognize the names. Anne LeClaire and Kristen Higgins. It's going to be held from 1 to 4 o'clock in the afternoon. It is a major fundraiser to benefit the Harwich Port Library and the Chase Library. Limited seating is there. The tickets are $60, and I will tell you the, ho the uh, phone numbers for each of the libraries. If you want to order your tickets through the Harwich Port Library, you can call 508-432-3320. If you want to order them through the Chase Library, you can call 508-432-2610. And once again, it is a tea party at the Requasset Resort on Pleasant Bay on October 1st from 1 to 4 p.m. And I've attended those, and they are absolutely wonderful. They really are. And there'll be a raffle, a high tea, and if you want, you can wear a pretty hat. Oh, sounds rather nice. Yes, it does. <laughs> Very good. Excellent. Okay, now all are invited from Dennis, Harwich, and Yarmouth uh, to discuss DHY Clean Waters Community Partnership. Ooh. As you know, we are going into a partnership with Dennis and um, Yarmouth. Uh, for the, you know, the water uh, partnership and clean waters effort uh, that's going to be happening here over the next several years. Uh, this is going to be taking place on September 19th at 6 p.m. Uh, right here at the Harwich Community Center. 
And it's uh, really great to have an open conversation with the yes. three towns. And, um, you know, you'll get an idea as to what's going on and, uh, you know, how things are going to uh, happen. Um, in, you know, I can, you know, double this with this one. The town of Harwich, um, the sewerage works improvement phase two um, is, uh, you know, there's some information about that too. Here's the construction schedule, which you might want to be aware of. This is a weekly update. This is submitted just recently. Um, the one week look ahead, 916. Mainline sewer crew number one. They're going to continue installation of sewer services on Hendon Road. So be aware of that, those of you who are over there. Continue installation of sewer services on, <coughs> in various locations and commence installation on Johanna's Path. So you just need to be aware that these things are going to be happening on an ongoing basis. Now mainline sewer crew number two is going to continue installation on Route 137 mm -hmm. and there will be a detour out there so uh, just be aware of that. The two-week look ahead which will be 923 um, through 27 uh, mainline sewer crew number one will be continuing installation on Joanna's Path. Mainline sewer crew number two will continue installation on Route 137, and there'll be a detour there on 137. Now the three-week look ahead, so this gives you a good window of uh, uh, knowing what's going on. From September 30th through October 4th, mainline sewer crew number one will continue installation on Joanna's Path. Mainline sewer crew number two continuing uh, installation on Route 137, and there'll be a detour. So uh, again, just be aware that these things are going to be going on on an ongoing basis. The projected schedule, it'll be adjusted accordingly based on the contractor's actual progress and the weather. Uh, on an as-needed basis, auxiliary crews will be performing testing, installing, uh, installing inverts, I don't even know what an invert is, but uh, uh, raising castings, paving, and performing general cleanup at various locations throughout the project area. So I guess most of that's over in East Harwich. So you folks over there, just be aware mm -hmm. of all of this going on. So uh, sewerage is coming. Eventually it'll come to all of us. Uh, uh, but the folks over in East, East Harwich are getting it first. So that's that. All right. That was good information, Jack. So, <laughs> thank you, Eileen. <laughs> I will be aware for the next three weeks when yeah, I'm going over, over there, 137 right. way. Yeah, exactly, exactly. <laughs> now, um, as you know, if you don't, didn't, you must have been uh, in Europe somewhere. We had a tornado here recently. And um, the Realtors Association um, uh, sat down with Dinah. There is a grant that is available uh, for those that had damage and uh, they want to uh, bring you up to date. So um, we're going to now, Diana will sit down with um, the, uh, I believe the president and the COO of the Realtors Association to bring us up to date of what's available uh, as far as a grant, uh, you know, concerning the tornado. So let's take a look. Hello, I'm delighted to be here with representatives of the Realtors Association including Marissa Sear, who is the COO of the Realtors Association, and Joe Arnaud, who is the president of the board. Is that right? That's correct. Of the, of the uh, association. And uh, they're going to tell us about a very wonderful program that they've instituted to help people who uh, suffered damage from the tornado. Is that correct? That's correct. Okay. Can you tell us a little bit about that program? Absolutely. We have put together the Cape and Islands Association of Realtors Howard Relief Fund. It's for homeowners in, that live in the town of Harwich who have suffered damage from the tornadoes. We have uh, up to $20,000 from the Realtors Relief Fund that we can help assist people who, with, who suffered damage for in increments up to $2,000. That's really wonderful. And how, how does the grant program work? How do people apply for those funds? 
Yeah, so I will take that one. So okay. um, to be eligible, you have to, as Joe mentioned, you have to be a homeowner in Harwich, mm -hmm. and you have to have um, damage to your primary residence. So it doesn't cover like tree cleanup. I know a lot of people had a lot of trees down. It doesn't cover that sort of thing. It mm -hmm. actually has to be damaged to the residence. Mm -hmm. um, and you can apply, um, basically submit an application to us, and we'll review it um, and send it to the Re Realtor Relief Foundation. Mm -hmm. um, I think our website is going to be um, sh shown on, on TV, but it's um, ccior.com slash Harwich Grants is where you can access the okay. um, application. And can you tell us a little bit about how it is that only Harwich residents are, are eligible yes. for this? Yes, yeah, I know a lot of other areas were in, in, impacted by the tornadoes, um, but mm. through the Realtor Relief Fund, which is a national, um, a national organization that basically helps different communities that were impacted by natural disasters, um, part of the criteria is the area has to be in a uh, declared an emergency zone or area. So Harwich was the only town on the Cape that declared that following the um, tornado. So that's why just that area is eligible. I see. Okay. And you say it does not cover cleanup like down limbs and so yeah. forth unless it has an effect on the home. Exactly. We've gotten a lot of calls okay. about that, but unfortunately, no, it's just if you've actually mm -hmm. um, gotten damage. And the funds actually go toward your mortgage or rent payment. Mm. So that's how it works. It helps um, subsidize the cost of your mortgage so you can have more funds to deal with cleanup or other damages that might have happened. I see. Okay. Well, it sounds like a wonderful, wonderful opportunity for people who are having a difficult time. And I know it was very costly for a lot of people, this, this little tornado that we had. Definitely. Right. Mm -hmm. okay. um, so uh, how did you happen to decide to do this? Why is the Realty Association doing this, making the funds available? So as, as realtors, we are guided by the Realtor Code of Ethics. And it is a, a core piece that we help foster our communities, we help our neighbors. We, our neighbors are realtors and realtors are our neighbors. Uh, so we're right in the community and it's, it's a wonderful thing that we can do to give back and help support our, our realtor, our, our, our members, um, our members' customers and clients and their neighbors. Mm -hmm. All boats rise when the community is doing well, and we are not just uh, doing this, but we are involved in many aspects of, of the towns, uh, making them better places to live, and it's wonderful that we can support our neighbors. It's really who we are. Yes, well, that's great. And uh, you launched the program on the 16th of August, mm -hmm. and how has the response been so far? It's been good. We already, we, I think we've had so far four applications that have been approved. Um, so we've already given out, a, are about to give out about $5,000 of funds. So we still have a $15,000 available. So um, we're hoping to get more applications in and just help as many people as we can. Okay. All right. Great. So what is the Realtor Relief Foundation? What is that exactly and how does that work? Yeah, it's actually fitting because it was, um, it was founded after September 11th um, by the Realtor Organization as a way um, to to help communities that were impacted by disasters. So they, they, it's funded by donations from realtors across the country and then areas like that were impacted um, can apply for the funds and, and so that's how it's worked mm -hmm. here. So they've um, helped communities across the country, um, you know, California to Massachusetts, depending on, you know, what, what's going on and, and been able to assist in that way, so. I see. Mm -hmm. So this is part of a much longer history of helping the communities out. And yes really wanting to be part of the community building that is so important. Definitely. And, and as I understand it, this was started on September 11th. Yes. After, yep. mm -hmm. after the mm -hmm. yep. summer. So that's so great. And do you have anything else you'd like to say? Uh, I, I just want to say as, as, a, as the uh, president of the association, I want to thank uh, Marissa and her staff for putting this together. It's, it's they who know what's going on and bring it to us. And uh, speak to one of your realtor friends mm -hmm. if you know somebody that's in need or if you yourself have some issues find a realtor or go to the Cape and Island Association of Realtors website and and seek out any help we can offer we'll be happy to do it okay well thank you so much for thank instituting you. the program and for coming on to talk about it appreciate it very much yeah. Yeah, thank thanks. you right this is Dine Lane for Channel 18 thank you so much you know, that is a lot of important information for people yes, that were affected is. by yes, the tornado. Definitely. And yeah. I hope people take advantage of it and, uh, uh, you know, do what they have to do to get what they can. Mm -hmm. And uh, as we know, people personally that mm -hmm. had some major, oh, damage, major damage. And, uh, um, you know, luckily we didn't, but uh, we know people that did. Mm -hmm. And uh, hopefully uh, you can take advantage of, um, of tornado relief.
Very good, Jack. What you're going to talk about now is one of my favorite things. Yes, and maybe someday we'll get there. <laughs> <laughs> Touch a Truck is coming up on Saturday, September 28th, so if you're interested, mark your calendars, 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. at the Community Center parking lot. It is a free event and is presented by the Harwich Community Center. Kids of all ages <clears throat> are invited to climb up and on and sit in the driver's seat of some of their favorite trucks and interact with the people who help protect and maintain our community. Touch a Truck is an interactive and educational event that gives children of all ages the chance to learn about their favorite trucks. If you need any more information on that, you can call 508-430-7568. And I'd like to add an addendum. We are also holding a Halloween costume drive here at the Community Center. It's very important for children they can't afford to have their own Halloween costumes, so if you have some that are in good condition or even parts and pieces, masks, capes, wands, tiaras, um, you can bring them. All parts, pieces, and Halloween costumes are needed, and you can bring them to the touch a truck um, It would be wonderful if you could. The box will be there waiting for your donations, and kids will be able to pick out their costumes on October 18th from 5 to 8 p.m., Everything will be free, so please help us out and bring some Halloween parts, pieces, costumes, whatever you have that are in usable condition because they are needed. Yeah, very good, Eileen. Thank you. And uh, You're welcome. Uh, oh, and, and the, um, the sock drive is going to be talked about as well, right? Yes, the, it is, and we're going to talk about that in just a second. Mm -hmm. um, uh, but before we do, we just want to remind you, we have, I think, announced this maybe once before, uh, there is a blood drive that's going to be happening the Harwich Community Blood Drive uh, is going to be taking place at the Harwich Community Center right here on Thursday, September 19th uh, from noon to 5 p.m. That's from noon to 5 p.m. And um, you can, uh, for more information, you can call 1-800-RED-CROSS uh, or visit the redcrossblood.org and enter. Um, you can streamline your donation. You can save some time. Um, you can streamline your donation experience and save up to 15 minutes by visiting that Red Cross uh, website, uh, redcrossblood.org forward slash rapid pass to complete your pre-donation um, reading and health history questions on the day of your appointment. So that'll make it a little bit faster, though it goes pretty fast anyway. But again, very important to give blood if you can uh, right here on Thursday, September 19th, from noon to 5 p.m. Very good. And, um, you know, getting back to uh, what you were talking about uh, with the touch of truck and Halloween, um, we're going to be uh, ending our show, but before we do, we just want to let you know, um, Carolyn and Erica uh, have their own little mini show coming up next, and they're going to be talking about the Halloween and the sock drive and the costume drive. Y you just have to stay tuned to listen because it is so important. It is. It is. And the sock box is filling up. Yeah, the sock box is doing well. Yeah. The, the uh, costume box, you know, they could use a little more help. Mm -hmm. But in the meantime, uh, for us, we'd like to say bye-bye and uh, thank you so much for joining us on behalf of all of us here at Channel 18. We really appreciate you tuning us in. And please take advantage of everything going on around town, especially the Cranberry Harvest Festival, Music Fest, and fireworks this upcoming weekend. Hope to see you there. Very good. Stay Bye. tuned for Carolyn and Erica. Bye-bye for now. Hi. Thanks for joining us. So Erica was over in the building visiting, uh, actually working, and I saw that the studio is open, so we have so much to talk about. You can decide later who we are. We're thinking uh, we've been Oprah and Gail before. I, I don't know. We could be Lucy and Ethel yes. by the end of this. <laughs> Just kidding. We're so excited to be here because we do have a lot to tell you. This is one of, oh, did I introduce myself? Carolyn Carey, Community Center Director. Sorry. I feel like I know you. Um, so this is one of those times when I feel the true meaning of community center. Absolutely. Isn't it great yes. in here, the spirit, yes. everything? And that is, in no small part, to the Strespec family. Oh, goodness. 
who I know Erica will tell you all about it, but there's so much going on. That's one of the events that's happening. Um, we have events coming up both at the Cultural Center and the Community Center. Um, but I really, I think we should start and end with that. So I'm going to let you start with the whole well, project. Well, we have, with the help of the Community Center, which is <laughs> wonderful, we have launched Cole's Socks for Smiles campaign. Um, Who's Cole? So Cole, <laughs> for Hi, the Cole. community that doesn't know, so Cole is my 12-year-old son. Uh, he's a middle schooler at the Monomoy Regional Middle School. And Cole has uh, refractory epilepsy. And what that means is drug resistant. Um, he's been having a really hard time getting his seizures under control. So his vivacious self has really changed over the last few months. And as I said in the, the story here, he had a very difficult summer. Um, as do many um, young adults who have epilepsy, the heat, the changes in meds. Um, and what happened on this last uh, trip to the ER, um, which we always do. I, you know, I went down to Child Life um, to find him a fun pair of socks to lift his spirits, and they only had one pair left. Not acceptable. And I, I kind of, you know, mulled it around in my head a little bit, and you know, I brought back a pair for him that fit him, uh, which was great. They're the fuzzy blue ones um, that he soon wanted to know if they had made it through the wash. And I said, listen, you know, let's. Let's do a collection and let's help fill the basket. Um, so from that small idea, and Cole was so on board, and Carolyn was on board, we have launched this massive campaign, which is so fun to see uh, the community spirit take off and people coming in. Someone just came in this morning and dropped off lovely socks, and it was wonderful to chat with, the, with her and um, share a little bit of Cole's story, which, again, is the story of many... Um, young children who face the challenge of epilepsy. So we are collecting new in package, fun, funky um, socks for children of all ages. Children's Hospital treats infants through young adults age 21. So we have some fun samples of just the wacky stuff that's been dropped off so far. We have, oh my gosh, Statue of Liberty. I love that. It's amazing. Um, some Keith Herring ones. So those are super awesome. Super cute Elmo. Love these. I thought it was Angry Birds. So I was like, Angry Birds! <laughs> um, I know it's Elmo now. But. Of course, fuzzy, comfy ones with grippies. So they don't have to have grippies, but grippies, grippies are always helpful. Some of the patients are, are able to get out of the bed when they're uh, up at the hospital. So grippy socks is really wonderful to have as part of our fun sock mix. So. Um, just so many opportunities to, to help put a smile on the face of the children up at Children's Hospital. And our faces, Absolutely. too. Absolutely. It's been great. And I will say, I, I feel so fortunate uh, to be part of the project. I really do. And, you know, I'm a huge fan of the whole family. Hi, Nolan. <laughs> I once I had a Jared at Embarrassing. Yeah. So, uh, but some of the fun things that are coming in. People are leaving messages for Cole or this making him things, rock. sending magnets. And yes, it's really great. There's another epilepsy warrior, um, and he sends magnets for smiles. Um, it's just really precious to see all these messages and things and the community coming together. Uh, one woman messaged me as soon as the hurricane passed in Florida. She was shipping out her her lot that she saw online. So if you're looking to connect with the project on Facebook, you can go to Cole's Socks for Smiles. And I'm sure you can find it through the Harwich uh, community website as well. Sure. Uh, and just another thing we're talking about, if you want to drop off one pair of socks, it's so appreciative. If you send two socks, it's not about the amount. It really isn't. No. It's, we, we are grateful for any amount that we can get. Um, and I know behind you, you have the sock donation count. It hasn't been filled in yet because, truthfully, we just came, we just up, came with. up with it. Thank <laughs> you, Sam. Uh, so we are going to start counting the socks that we get. And you can see how high up it goes. Which is way larger than our original plan, which was 500 socks. So Children's Hospital has 404 inpatient beds. 
Um, so that was our original sort of number, 500, that felt comfortable and, and doable. But this is Harwich, so we're going big. We are going big. So. And I'm going even bigger because that's just one sock, and nobody gets just one sock. So I hope we fill <laughs> that and make it match. More. We want a pair of socks. Um, so we're excited about the whole sock project. Uh, look for more information. Erica does a great job updating the page and showing you all the fun socks that are coming in and uh, taking pictures of people and all the people who are helping us with this. It's been great. I know the police department is posting and Chatham Fire, Chatham Department, Fire department, department has collection. The school has a collection. Yes. Uh, and just on a very side note, I want to say, I know this is Cole's project, but um, epilepsy does not just strike one child. It's a family. Um, Erica's family is great. We, we know Cole has two brothers who are supportive and loving and amazing individuals. So this is so much more than just socks. It's important for people to know that we're all here in the community, and if a sock can show that, then I'm all for it. So... To anyone out there who's having trouble or has a child, uh, we get it. We know. So anything we can do. So that's it. Our socks. That's our sock excitement for the day. We'll come back to that at the end. But what's your excitement? Because okay. this is super fun. I don't know where to start, but I'll start with the <laughs> costumes. Oh, look, a wizard. Um, as you know, we do a donation. You can drop off your gently used costumes because kids don't like to be the same thing twice, no. two times. So no. they usually wear a costume once. And then what do you do with it? You can do donate it here to the community center in the lovely, lovely, lovely little bin, the Halloween costume drop-off bin. We'll have it out now, and we'll be bringing it to our events. Uh, and what we do is a boutique. I love that. Boo. It's so <laughs> it's fun. It's very fun. Um, where individuals can come and take whatever they need for Halloween. A costume, we have, uh, whether it's a collection basket or accessories. Fake and goo. Yeah, we crazy have Crazy masks <laughs> we've come home with. Yes, and so, one, you know, we have, we take every size from small, small to big, big, and yeah, all, everything in between. We have babies. A lot of these are new that were donated, yes. but and some people prefer to do that, that's lovely. But also, really, the gently used ones are lovely, too, because nobody's wearing them every day. And if they do, great. We're happy they've worn them. Uh, but just some ideas, firefighters. Ooh, maybe I'm going to throw this on. What do you think? <laughs> I know Jamie right now is freaking out, but how's this? Okay. See, she, it's totally doable. It is. You can do Anyway, I'll take this off. So <laughs> with the socks, we got socks going on. So that is our boutique. Um, you can drop them off now until the day that we have the boutique, which is in October, uh, October 18th to be exact. We do it in the multi-purpose room. We always have a little party. There's coloring going so on. Much fun. It's, it is a good time. Yeah. And the kids just come in and get to shop, so we love that. On September 28th, we are having, I'm, I'm showing the flyer, touch a truck. Always a great time. Another great community thing. Yes. Everyone comes together. The DPW, the Department of Public Works, the um, fire department, police department, um, some local trucking companies yeah. come help so out. We some tractors on we there. We do. We have, oh, the water department yeah. comes. There, and it's so great to watch this. And I know people are not going to like what I say, but I really enjoy watching the adults. Some of these people <laughs> yeah. who come with the kids, you know, they're bringing the kids, they are touching those yeah, trucks like, like oh. yeah, like, oh, how does this work? <laughs> yes, absolutely. And, it, and it's great for the town departments because yes. then they can share a little bit about what they do. So don't feel bad. I, I'm enjoying those trucks as well. Um, and I just think, again, a free event, free, free, um, come to the community center. That is on September 28th from 11 to 2. And if you happen to be coming, maybe you want to, this will be outside for your donations. If you want to drop a costume in, if you're bringing one or bringing the kids. Uh, and I do find it's kind of like the socks. People really enjoy right. giving and seeing where they go. Right. And you've been to that event, so yeah, you've seen the really kids fun. who are so happy to be there. And the mixing and the matching, and then they become something else. That's the best. 
just so that's creative. Best. You know me, I'd be like, oh, here's, yeah. here, this will be fine. Right. And Eric would be like, no. So <laughs> With the green wig yeah. and a hat. Yes, so we have absolutely. a lot of that. And we do have a lot of accessories. So Touch a Truck, Saturday, September 28th from 11 to 2 here at the Community Center parking lot. Donations are being taken now until September, uh, October 18th for our boutique. And just as a side note, I know that we've announced this several times, but also the Day of Giving, we're collecting for that too, veterans. Um, and, and there's a box outside of the Council on Aging. Um, I know the flyer will appear for you, but honestly, that's what I mean about this being a community. We can run the gamut of how many people come in, who we're helping, and it's not about, oh my God, I have to bring socks and a costume and a canned good. That's not what it is at right. all. It's that this is a location where if you would like to do the, those things, you can. You can. And if you don't, there's no problem at all. You're still, we love having right. you here. It's just a just great place. Just your presence place. is wonderful. Yeah, and it's Absolutely. been really supportive. So I have to say, I know you have some things to announce, but we also have one other thing yes. to announce. Is it a high five on it too, right? High five. Ladies and gentlemen, the first season? Season. Season one of the yes. Seaside Marketplace at Sacquatucket Marina has closed. And we would like to thank everyone who shopped there. Fabulous. The vendors, certainly the Harbor Department who Absolutely. helped us. Um, it was, honestly, I've never run sheds well, or marketplaces before. So um, what we're doing now is actually we are going through and going to see what changes we need to make with the hours right. right. So we're assessing that, and you will see that um, coming in the fall. Yeah, this fall. We'll open up our call for vendors much sooner. We were so late. late. I mean, we were still building them this spring. Um, you know, we were definitely were late uh, to the ball game, but it was wonderful once they got rolling oh my goodness. and the feedback from the vendors and uh, the ferry goers and the community um, was really wonderful. Um, Both it was positive great to hear. And, and, and people who had really um, constructive ideas of, and of what we should do, signs and things it. like that. Absolutely. So uh, we're happy that it was um, successful and what a great experience. I, as I said, I said to somebody else, um, you know, between this building, the cultural center, and being down there, I got to see so right. many different pockets of our community yes. coming together. I also got to watch a different department because I, I don't really spend a lot of time at the harbor, but it's interesting to see how different departments working too and how they are extending themselves right. and what we can and do. And their flows and changes. Yeah, and yes. what we can do together. Yes. So that's our thank you. Um, we are closed for the for the season. For season one. But, but we're looking forward to coming back season two longer and stronger. Longer and stronger on uh, new That could be our new theme. Okay. All right. Well, what else? All of that information, if you are looking for that and wanting to stay abreast of that, will be posted on our town website, on my department's website, um, but the department website for the Harwich Cultural Center. So that's where you'll find that information. You know what else I want to say? Just because I did it this morning. <laughs> This is so bad that I didn't know this, so I apologize in advance, but great job to whoever does this. On the town website, we went to your... Um, we were looking at this. Uh, we were looking at my newsletter. Which Erica does a newsletter once a month, um, and it is on the website. Yes, you can find it on the bottom link. There's a link that says archive, but I might even make it a little bit more prominent now that we found out this fun feature. You can click on it, and it actually will read it to you. Right hand click and it will it gives you three yeah. options. So I had it read to me this morning. It Which, was what a great feature for uh, the uh, you know, for accessibility. I how I was thrilled. I didn't know about that feature, so I feel really great that there's one more audience that hopefully we right. can reach and really let people know what's going on in this building, which is growing and growing. Um, the, you know, the newsletter comes out digitally, um, but if you really did need a, a hard copy, we certainly could accommodate that. But it's all right there on the website. All the previous issues are on the website. So um, I hope people can utilize that feature and learn more about what we're doing over there. Um, the other part of um, utilizing that town website is uh, the town calendar. 
uh, which you can get right from the page as well. That, that link is on the bottom right. And I've been really actively trying to load in all the public events, all the public classes. Um, so if you are looking to do something at the center or um, saying I want to take a class, I heard about something, I'm really trying to get as quickly as I can all of that information on this calendar. Um, but if you are looking to host an event and you're thinking, well, I'm thinking maybe on a Saturday, you know, late August, I wonder if there's any availability. This might give you a peek in the window of whether or not I may or may not have time or a completely open schedule. Um, that's an often request that I get is when do I have free time at the building? So that would give you a glimpse of um, available time because of course some of the things are not open to the public and wouldn't be posted. But again, um, a helpful tool that we hope the community finds uh, useful in, in understanding how that building has so much use and such diverse use. And if you haven't stopped over, it's never too late. We do have open hours yes. on Saturdays. From, um, oh, sorry. Nope, from t fall studio hours, 10 to 1. 10 to 1, you can come by the Cultural Center and check it out. We do invite our artists um, to be there, and not all of them are there every day, but every Saturday, take a trip over there or pick a Saturday, come by. We're excited to have the building open for people to come in if you're not taking a class um, or if you haven't seen it. It's so fun to watch when people are like, I went to school right. there and they're bringing the kids with them. Um, I always ask the same question, which was your locker? Not once has someone said, I don't remember. They take me right to always the area help. or they'll say, it was one of these two. Right. So it's kind it's of great. fun. It's really just another. And if, if it's a if it's a if just a day during the week and you're wondering if we're open, always look for the open flag. We try to have that open. Um, you know, as Carolyn alluded to, sometimes I'm in this building or I've been down right. at the harbor or I'm running around. Um, of course, my student intern is back to uh, high school. Thanks, Brianna. She's been wonderful, but she's going to stay on with us during Saturdays. Um, so we really are trying to make ourselves available to the public. Um, and so we're look always, for the sign. always looking for volunteers. We also, we had a high school student and we had a senior work ops Oh, and person. Mike was wonderful. Mike was great. So we are trying to utilize as much resources as we can, but we're always looking for volunteers. We have a few who are helping us out. It's great. But if you're interested in that too, please don't hesitate to give Reach us out. a call. Yeah, we have a lot of opportunity for people to get involved or to learn a little bit and give back. So, oh my gosh, have we talked about everything? Have we talked about everything? Pretty, I mean, let me just highlight really quickly some of the exciting oh, new classes that are going to be there. Idea. So we do have some that are ongoing. Kitty Scabelli, she's been doing a lot of mixed media classes. Those are ongoing. Um, Bernadette Waystack does our first Thursday of the oh, month. Fun. So that starts. We yeah. did take a break during um, summer. So that's first Thursday will happen this evening. Um, and, then, and that's ongoing, the first Thursday of every month. Of course, the last Monday of every month, we do um, drawing, um, figure drawing. So that's an ongoing event. We still have our Labyrinth Quest that happens the second Friday of every month. We have the Cape Cod Makers have an open house uh, the fourth Saturday of the month. So all of those kinds of dates are on there. But one of the new programs that's happening, um, and it's happening in other communities, so I'm really pleased that Harwich can participate, is the Community Development Partnership. Uh, they'll be offering office hours at the Harwich Cultural Center. Three dates available for that, September 12th, October 10th, November 14th, and December 12th. So if you have questions about your business, uh, where to go to find the answers, drop in, make an appointment with Pam. Um, she'll help you address a variety of topics, including record keeping, book, uh, QuickBooks, business planning, cash flow projections, marketing, steps to starting a business and setting goals, and much more. So a really free, useful tool for the creative entrepreneur and the local entrepreneurs in our community. Hopefully, uh, people will see that and really use that, um, that service. Which, uh, just on that. What a great idea if you're in the business and thinking, what does the cultural center have to do for me? Here you go. This might be one of those things. So never just think, I, I know when I meet some people in there, like what, they're just painting over there. It is far from it's that. It's much Just more. on the things that you've mentioned, 
but this could be something that helps other individuals who might not see where they can connect with the cultural center. Absolutely. And it's another free service. So uh, this is really for the community and we want people to come in and take advantage of things like that. And if you have an idea of something that we haven't thought of or some way, just reach out to us. Yeah, We're email. Yeah, happy absolutely. To, Give happy us a to call. see what we can do for you. Uh, another fun one that we're kicking off is a Wild Irish Rose. She'll be doing two pop-up floral events. So the first one is in September, September 19th, and then one later on in October, which will be a fun pumpkin one. Where you have to bring your own pumpkin carved out and ready, but um, that looks really cute. Yeah, that looks really fun. I don't know if I like to get the seeds out, though. That's see, that's the part yeah. I like. I couldn't make them pretty, but I can see that's yes. why we lose yeah. the yeah. There yeah. we go. <laughs> So, um, so that's that. And if you're a member of the local union, there's a there's a training session that's going on. So again, this is just a great use of the building. And they pay, yes. so they're yep. bringing revenue into the. Those things are important that people know that people are paying to use the building. Revenue coming in goes. To um, there's the breastfeeding and baby shower supported by the WIC group. So that's a great. I think this is their second year doing that. Oh, that's that was a great. great. Yeah. That's a great event for the community. Um, but the other really fun one, um, which I think a lot of people might find interesting, so pre-registration is requested, uh, letterpress and printing workshop. If you've been down to Jesse's studio in the basement, um, it's amazing. It's kind of a time capsule of, of printing. Um, and he's going to be um, helping you set up your type, learn about typesetting. Um, he asks that you bring a, a small quote that you'd like to kind of typeset and print yourself, so you will be going home with something. Um, that's gonna, it's, uh, it's gonna be great. And I have a background in printing myself, so I can tell you, it's, it's super, uh, it's a lot of fun. It's, it's hard and it's wonderful to understand the hard work that goes into creating such a craft. But that's what yes. I like, like you just said, you're gonna go home with something. You're gonna go home you made with something. something so. Uh, how wonderful. So that takes place on Saturday the 28th uh, from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. Again, pre-registration is requested, $75 per person, and it is limited to six people. So um, please do reach out. Um, you can email Jesse printercarver at gmail.com, or you can connect with me um, at the Cultural Center at townofharwich.us. So lots of great things. Um, I'm just going to briefly mention this, although this is way into October, but I know it's been an important topic that people have been talking about the algae, the algae blooms right. um, and the seaweed blooms. So they're going to be giving a free forum, the Blue Institute at Cape Cod. So there'll be a couple different speakers, including Heinz Proft of the Natural Resources Department for the town of Harwich. So again, look on the calendar. That's a, that's a little bit forward into October, but it kind of gives you an idea of the diverse gamut. gamut of things that we're trying to offer from that building. It's great. Okay, so just my little recap. I know Jamie's like, stop these two. Uh, this is what happens when we get in I here by, it. We on, by ourselves. Don't forget uh, the boutique costume drop-off, really the touch a truck free event. Um, certainly going to the Community Center website, our calendar is there as well. And the Coles Socks for Smiles campaign. Drop off a sock. Uh, it stop makes it you smile and really just does. imagine. We're imagining these young children at the hospital wearing these super fun socks. So I want to oh, know I who definitely. gets the bacon socks or the cheeseburger socks. I think that's fabulous. The, and there have been some so cute socks coming in. So. We're excited about this. Thank you, as always, to the community who really makes this place live and breathe. It truthfully does. We're so, so grateful. It's been really fun. Thanks, yes, Erica. Thanks. We're going to take over next week. <laughs> I know. Lock the doors. Thank you, Channel 18, for always helping us post and get the word out to the public. Uh, we really appreciate all of you. And um, come on in. Stop in and see us. Thanks again. Take care.